Joe Cook is the sports director over there at WAPT News. Okay. Um, that's a post to my dear brother Ray Caesar Leo once held. Shout out to my brother Ray Caesar Leo. Okay. And Joe Cook reported via Twitter that EJ Payman, the top player in the state of Mississippi out of Raymond High School, signs with Mississippi State. Okay. Um, and Ken Clark, the face of Jackson State Sports Media, posed the question. Okay. The King said, who was the last player to go to the league and have a successful professional career from Mississippi State? Just a question, okay? Now, of course, that question stood out to me because two of those top players that Mississippi State has gotten during this run of their dominant recruiting in basketball have been two of my guys, okay? Quindary Weatherspoon and Nick Weatherspoon, okay? Quindary went on to get drafted into the NBA by the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, long story short, eventually he wound up on the Golden State Warriors. He won a championship with that team, okay? Since then, you know, he's been overseas. He's done stints in the G League, all that kind of shit. Shout out Quindary, okay? Nick's route was a little different, okay? However, it shouldn't have been so. He should have been a one and done. And uh, should have, should be an NBA contributor as we speak. Okay. I'll speak to why I think that didn't happen shortly. Okay. But another account came under, under King Ken Clark's post. And that's this. What do you think can be done to bring the top talent to JSU? Because at the end of the day, JSU and State are playing for the same thing. As some of your homeboy first been saying. Get to the NCAA tournament. Mississippi State has gotten every number one player in the state since 2015 outside of Deshaun, my, Mr. Ruffin, who ended up going to Ole Miss, and been to tourney two times in 15 years. To which Ken, Ken Clark responded, this is a great question, okay? Uh, this brother goes on, okay? And I, this is only done money, entertainment. I hope I'm getting that right, okay? Only D-O-N dollar sign entertainment, okay? And a real genuine question, too. The gap is way small in basketball, and after watching two Mississippi boys lead FAU to a Final Four, okay, uh, and that's including one of my guys as well, Brandon Wellerspoon. Shout out to Pat. All right. That showed as long as you're a D1 school, you can compete and make a run. In a conference, I just want to know what can we do. I'm, I'm hoops head before anything. Well, King, I got the answer for you. I've given the answer before. I don't know if you've seen those segments, but I got the answer for you. And for all the real ones who want to participate in Operation Five Star, okay? Because I have talked to my former five-star athlete, Nick Weatherspoon. I've talked to one of my other great athletes, okay, who was a Dan the Dozen, about this very topic. And, and I'm going to reveal to you what they shared with me. But before I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay? I am your homeboy first, and this is the realest, most entertaining show in the game. Put it on something. Again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, put all your people on it. Also, make sure you fuck with our sponsor, the King McNeil Collection. That is the King McNeil Collection for all of your uh, fraternity and sorority gear needs, okay? Uh, download the app or go to kingmcneil.com, okay? Your first purchase on the app. We'll get you 20% off. That is the King McNeil Collection. Tell them first century, okay? So let's get into this, y'all, okay? Uh, I actually sent my young boy, Nick Weatherspoon, uh, that tweet. 
from that king, asking the question, you know, what do you think can be done to bring the top talent JSU? Okay. And my youngin told, he quote tweeted that and simply said, it ain't hard. Laugh out loud. Okay. Now, some may say that's incorrect. Some may think it's hard. It's it's really not. My youngin wasn't being facetious. Okay. There are several things that must happen. And those things are possible. Okay. And let's be open and honest about it too. One, you got to pay them. You got to pay them. That's what these big schools are doing. It, it, it ain't about white is right. It ain't about uh, size of school. It's two things. It's paying them, and it's the hope of getting to the NBA. Those are two top things for these kids, okay? They want the opportunity to make some money, and they want the opportunity to make big money in the future. That's what they want. Both of those things can be accomplished at Jack State University, okay? They can. I know they can, okay? Let me tell you why I know one thing, okay? Look at um, look at some of the group economic things that King Ken Clark and his platform has been able to do. That platform has been able to, to raise money from a group economic standpoint, from just mobilizing the fan base. They've been able to raise money for numerous initiatives and get that shit done. You feel me? Depending on what the initiative was. We can do the same thing for Operation Five Star. What I mean by Operation Five Star is us getting on our shit and getting dedicated to get a five-star big-time athlete to come hoop for us at the AAC. All it takes is one. This ain't football, man. We did that in football. We got Travis Hunter. We changed the game, okay, when we got him. That's football. That's one goddamn player. Now, I know he played both uh, wide receiver and cornerback, so I guess we got a two-for-one, okay? Still didn't win the celebration bowl. He's one goddamn guy. One guy, okay? One the swag, but he's one guy, okay? One guy. In football, Keep saying it's the ultimate team game, even though big sports media only makes it about the quarterback. But there's so many other moving pieces in football. The quarterback is the most important guy, and Shadur was a motherfucker for us, okay? But Shadur spent half the game sitting on his ass. Basketball ain't like that. Basketball ain't like that. Right now, for our men's team, the, the uh, 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 Ken Evans routinely plays 37 of the 40 minutes. That's like norm for him. It's a 40-minute game. That young man out there damn near the whole game, every game. That's basketball. Okay. So if we're able to get a five-star out there, a true stud, a true bucket, a, a motherfucker who uh, is electrifying. We can re really revolutionize some shit. But that kind of kid wants to be compensated. Mississippi State offers them that. Their boosters do. I remember during my coaching career, all right, and again, when I speak on shit, I speak as an authority on shit because I've been there and done that. Okay? I ain't just one of these motherfuckers with a show that don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay? If I speak on uh politics is because I'm a fucking history teacher. If I uh if I speak on education or well, the educational system is because I'm a, a fucking his, history teacher. Okay. By trade. Okay, I'm a businessman now, but by trade, that, that that that's what I did. I did that. Now I go around a whole state teaching that. Okay. If I speak on uh ball, that's because I coached ball. You feel me? If I speak on the entertainment business, that's because I am in the entertainment business. I'm an authority on what the fuck I speak on. 
So I'm telling you what I know. So I remember distinctly during my career, we had a damn summer league basketball game, and I look up, and I'm like, what the fuck? And it was this white dude in there taking notes. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This is some strange shit. That white man was a booster for Mississippi State. That white man was scouting talent. He was trying to figure out who they need to pay next. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I saw. I'm telling you what I know. Okay? That's kind of shit they own. We, we just got to be 100. We're not finna uh, civil rights movement, these kids, and it comes to high school. We're not finna do it. We're not. We might be able to get that with a, with a particular jock. If we, can, if we can study the landscape and try to figure out which one of these kids uh, got some deep thinking like that, or uh, figure out maybe if their parents got some deep thinking like that. Because honestly, like I, I, I hit up uh, Ken about this before, and Ken know, know I did this, okay? Talked about uh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf's kid. He got a son who hooping right now. So I've been putting up decent numbers. I've been trying to follow him throughout the year. You know what I'm talking about? I would say we should go after him. Now, I don't know how highly rated he, he is, okay? I would have to go and check and see what he's looking like. But I'm just saying, the fact that his father, I know his father got that mindset, you know what I'm saying, of, of standing up for us and shit like that and standing for something, you feel me? He didn't been through it. He was, he was Colin Kaepernick before there was a Colin Kaepernick. Okay, the clan that burned this man's house down. Okay, but you know, other than a kid like that, you want to pay these kids, these, 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 these young men, and for that matter, the young women. Shit, they, they ain't, they, they're athletes, they're not the, the kids that, that that's the future president. So, a lot of this stuff ain't front of mind for them. Now, that's one thing we can do. And grooming them in the K-12 system for this type of shit to be more front of mind for them. But again, that's on us as adults to be putting that kind of shit in our children's minds. Okay? We can't have it to where once they meet a motherfucker like me, and I used to teach the 11th grade, okay? And, and until they reach a motherfucker like me, they ain't really had no revolutionary thinking like that in front of them. That can't be the case, and then all of a sudden you think we're going to change them and make them think with, with, with human rights and civil rights in front of mind and all that kind of stuff. No. They, that shit has to start early, early, early. It has to be ingrained in them and constantly, constantly, constantly put before them. We have to do that. That's the adults. Okay? So outside of that, we got to pay these kids. We got to pay them. Okay? A five-star. He should even a four-star at a high school. These are kids that are dominating on that AU circuit. Dominate. These are kids that got the hoop mixtape. These are kids that got thousands and thousands of followers already because of what they're doing. These are kids who are many stars. And they're all right. Okay? And so they gonna look around and they don't see they partnering them, getting this, getting that, especially in this NIL era, for going to these schools. So we gonna have to pay them. Okay, we gonna have to come up off a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand. We gonna have to come up off that. Now some may say, "Well, no, we can't do that. We can do that. We can do that. We just saw Florida a and Raise a number in that ballpark trying to retain Willie Simmons. They put it together like that. Well, if they can do that for the coach, hell, we can do that for a player. We can do that for a player. We can. And when that player comes through, that year that that player spent with us, and hopefully it's just a year, hopefully that player is one and done. Hopefully that player comes in and tears this motherfucker up on some Carmelo Anthony type of shit. Okay, and lead us to the NCAA tournament and maybe even get a win up in that bitch. Okay, but do some magnificent shit and then get drafted and go get that generational wealth, young king. And then that kid will become a booster. 
to their beloved institution. And then you know what? We continue that cycle. That's what Kentucky does. That's what UK does. Okay? They get the one and dones in and, and cycle them motherfuckers on through there. Now, since Calipari ain't the best X's, X's and O's coach, it has only translated into one NCAA championship for them. Okay? But they're relevant. And then what the he what he he be at the draft with them grinning and shit. After they spent spent six months at Kentucky. Well, we need to convince them to spend six months with us, but we're gonna have to pay them. We're gonna have to pay them. And then we're gonna have to convince some of these folks who are, are, are tied to us that got some money, okay? Gonna have to uh, get these NIL deals uh, uh for them. And I hate to keep calling on Cortez Bryant, but I, he just be at the top of my mind because I know his ties to like Lil Wayne and Drake and all them motherfuckers, okay? But shit, between the Lil Waynes and the Drakes and all that kind of shit of the world, we should be able to put together an NIL package to get that kid the kind of guap he would want while he hooping for us, okay? We should smartly, as an institution, maybe put together some that uh, a YouTube series or something like that, kind of like the Coach Prime Doc. We can do that shit for that five star who's on campus. Follow them around, film that shit. We got a good enough, good enough team, okay, to put. Uh, and I'm talking about the media team. We got a good, we got a great media team. Fuck, good enough. We got a great media team that they can put together that kind of shit. Yeah. And put that shit out. Watch this five star at this prestigious uh, uh, HBCU. Go uh, 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 and have his one and done year. And this shit do it every year for every one of the motherfuckers we get. Because once you get the ball rolling, baby, it becomes a trend. Okay? We got an NBA coach in Coach Mo Williams. And then we talking about on the girl, the women's side, we got one of the best coaches in swag history at, with Tamika Reed. So we want to get one of these absolute studs out of high school to be in either one of their programs. We as the fan base the, uh, uh, and the boosters and the supporters and the alumni, we going to have to put some money together and pay them. And it's enough of us that we won't have to come up off of that much. Let's say all of us say, fuck it, I'm going to throw in $100. All of us that really about that life, we say, okay, I'm going to throw in $100 into the pool so we can get the, this stood. We got to pay them. We got to pay them, y'all. Okay? Next thing. Next thing. Um, I said they got to they gotta believe that they can make it to the lead from us. Okay? They got to believe that they can make it to the league from us. And see, that's where we got to start playing up what that king was talking about and which I've, what I've said before. When you play basketball for Jackson State University, you are playing for the same championship that North Carolina and Duke and Kentucky and uh, 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 UConn and all these other schools are playing for. You are playing for that same title. This ain't this whole bullshit of FBS. Let's go FBS in the or oh, let's go celebration bowl versus the FCS playoffs, even you know what I'm talking about. That shit is not a debate when it comes to basketball. You win the swag tournament, your ass gets an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. If your ass turn up enough during the regular season and win the swag tournament, you might not even end up with one of them low-ass seeds. You might get a better seed. Our women did. Our women did a couple years ago. Your phone last. With Amisha Weedon Holiday and Rogan and all them girls. Okay? Damn, they knocked off LSU. All right? We playing for the same shit. We as the fan base, though, don't be acting like that. We don't. 
We be called, we be waiting and waiting and waiting on the football team to beat an FBS team. But then when the basketball team beat these Power 5 schools, we don't make a big, as big of a fuss about it. We got to play that shit up. If we don't care, how we going to get some stud five-star basketball player to give a damn about it? If we don't care about basketball, how the hell are we going to get one of these studs to care about it? Okay? Take my player, Nick Weatherspoon. That boy was being recruited by North Carolina. That's where Michael Jordan went to school. That boy was being recruited by Kansas. That's where Wilt Chamberlain went to school. Okay? Yeah, he ended up at Mississippi State, but he had some shit on his plate. I'm looking at the text messages from North Carolina to him. Okay? Like, these are places where you turn on TV, you see how passionate those fan bases are about basketball. So if we want that caliber player, we got to be passionate about the sport that we <laughs> we want them to come play for us. You know what I'm saying? We got to do a better job of that because they want to know, hey, I can go there, I'm going to have a passionate fan base, and I can win there. And in winning, I can shine. And when you combine the uh, the passionate fan base, you combine the winning, and you combine me shining, damn, I can still get to the league from this bitch. And again, we got an NBA coach with NBA ties, okay? Former NBA All-Star, former NBA champion, played with the face of the league, played with the guy who's the most powerful player in NBA history, in my opinion, LeBron James, okay? He got these ties, man. He got them. Coach Reed is gaining more and more ties, okay? Her name steadily pops up when they talking about top black coaches in the country and shit like that. I think some uh, uh, ranking just had her in the top 10, okay? Not just the HBCU, HBCU coaches in the whole fucking country, okay? So I'm sure she's... Uh, building her network of people. She's had a player drafted before. So she knows what that process looks like. We, though, got to get behind this shit. And I know we're, we aren't behind it. Again, all I got to do is look at my numbers. When I do basketball segments and compare those numbers to when I do football segments, this shit pales in comparison. I know my views finna fall when football season is over. Because we just not as passionate about it. So we got to get behind it and create these environments that are uh, appealing to these five stars to come. Okay? If, if a player mentions that they've been offered in football by Jack State football, we be on them. At them. At, at them. At them. Come to D.I. Love. Come to D.I. Love. Ooh, come play in front of 50,000. Come play in front of 60,000. Ooh. We got to do that shit for basketball. And we're going to get these, boy. We're going to get these, boy, right here? Because these five-star boys, they they look, I'm telling you, a high school basketball player with them hoop mixtapes and all that shit, they be more famous than them football players. Travis Hunter is, is different. Travis Hunter was the number one player in the whole country, okay? But I'm just talking about your regular four-star, five-star basketball player compared to your regular four-star, five-star football player. It ain't pales comparison. Basketball stars, more notable. You don't have no helmet on. You see your face and all that kind of shit. You get to take it, especially high school, you get to take as many shots as you want to. You got the dunks and the crossovers and the block shots, all these highlight plays that go viral on uh, Instagram and Twitter, my boys, and went viral. Uh, fat Brandon Weatherspoon went viral for breaking a goal one time. Okay, uh, uh Nick Weatherspoon dunking on motherfuckers. Okay, I mean, shit, shit blowing up and everything like that. It's crazy. Basketball, you have more of that. You do. So these motherfuckers want to be courted. They do. Whether it's right or wrong, these little motherfuckers already be thinking to an extent that they made it. Now, I think that's wrong. They need to stop thinking that. Because we see how the league is going right now. We we got the European boys over here 
fucking running the league shit. But I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you what the perception is. A lot of these youngins, who are the AAU babies, they, they feel like shit, I'm that shit. And to get them, you got to treat them like they, they are that shit. Now, good coaching going to humble them. But I'm talking about from a recruit, recruitment standpoint, we got to get them. Got to get after them. Okay? And lastly, we got to believe we can get them. We got to believe we can goddamn get them. I asked my boy Nick straight up. Did Jack State really go after you? He said no. He said no. Okay. I asked uh, my youngin, my Kenfo actually, this is my wife's cousin, and I learned that after he got done playing for me. But Moses Greenwood, okay, he was a three-time champion, okay, out of Belma Jackson High School. Dandy Dozen, all-state team, okay? He ended up going to Southeast Louisiana. I asked him, did Jack State try to get him? And he was like, not really. Now, I think I believe, I think I remember Coach Wayne Brent trying to make some inroads on him. I think I remember that, okay? I don't know how passionately or how, uh, you know, how much of an effort that was. I don't know. But it seems like my youngin don't remember an intense effort to go after him. I think he wanted to go his, go to Southern Miss at the time, and I think Southern Miss didn't really put forth an effort to get him, okay? And he's ha he's having a successful professional career right now overseas, okay? He was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Uh, he's gotten taller since then, but I'm talking about when he played for me. Built like a truck, 6'5", six, uh, six, 230, okay? Jump out the gym. Jump out the gym, okay? I got a picture of him dunking over Quindera, who is six foot four, and jumping over him in the uh, we had a slam dunk contest uh before, well as a part of what our uh, madness event or something, you know, trying to introduce the start of the season and shit like that that year, okay? He's an athlete. He's the nephew of the legendary L.C. Greenwood from Canton, Mississippi, who should be a pro football Hall of Fame. But the man that played uh, uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Steel Curtain, okay, with Mean Joe Green in them, okay, the athleticism is in, in his blood. Now, I believe he would have went, could have gone to the NFL and been an all pro, but he said uh, his uncle L.C. Greenwood told him not to play football, okay. But that's the level of athlete that we're talking about. And we got to believe we can get them and really try to go get them. Really try to go get them. Okay? So let's go back through it. Okay? If we don't get one of these boys in Operation Five Star, we got to pay them. We got to pay them. Okay? We got to put some money together. Okay? And we're going to pay them. And also, we're going to have to use our connects. And we do have connects. We do have connect. So many goddamn folks connected to Jackson State that's doing big shit around this country. Big shit. Okay? We can figure out a way to get their ass an NIL deal as well. Numerous NIL deals that will be lucrative. Yes, we can. Okay? But we got to pay them. We got to pay them. Two, we got to convince them that they can win here and go to the league. Win, they can win, they can get their shine on, they can still make it to the league from us, okay? But we got to show them that we're passionate about it and we are uh, creating a uh, appealing environment that you can come and show the fuck out and we're going to be right there supporting you and, and, and go, have them motherfuckers going viral on a nightly basis so they're getting all the shine that they need for these damn folks to go ahead and still swoop them up in the draft, okay? That's two. And number three, we got to believe that we can get them. We got to actually go after them. Whether it be our staffs, and I've gotten word at least from, like, like we had that, that girl from the Germ, from Germantown who was that five-star, okay? Based on my sources, Coach Reed did go after that girl, okay? She did. But as the fan base, did we go after were we adding that girl? I think her name was Madison Booker. Were we getting at her on coach's behalf? We got to ask that. We got to believe that we can get them and do that. We do it for football. We got to believe we can get these folks, man. 
We do. Because we need to get them. And they need us to get them. Some of them do. Some of them go to PWIs and thrive. But my boy, Nick Weatherspoon, is the best athlete I've ever coached. That's including his brother, Quindary. Whole family is fucking athletes now. Okay? I think shit. All three of them could have gone pro in football, basketball, or baseball. That's how talented they are. But Nick is the one who is the most naturally athletically gifted. Okay? But Nick is also the one who is most volatile, okay? Uh, and at his core, he is a good kid, good young man now, okay? But uh, he needs to be coached. There's a lot of kids that need to be coached. You know what I'm saying? And when I say coach, he gets what you teach him to do. He going to do what you coach him to do on the basketball court. Okay, that's part of the reason y'all didn't get a chance to see the nigga Weatherspoon that I know because he went up there to Mississippi State and Ben Howland. I'm going to say it. This is my opinion. This is not what my youngins are saying. So if you connect to Mississippi State, don't be mad at me. I mean, don't be mad at my youngins. Be mad at me. I don't give a fuck, okay? In my opinion, Ben Howland didn't use Nick right. He didn't use Malik Newman right when Malik Newman went up there. He did. He did. Okay? He was riding high of what he did at UCLA, okay, with the three straight Final Four appearances, but he didn't win it. With all that damn talent he had, all them NBA players, uh, uh, future NBA Hall of Famers, he didn't win it. And I got a first-hand look at why not. Because he didn't know how to use his talent. We saw that with Malik Newman, and we saw it with my youngin. I know what my youngin is capable of. It's a reason why Kansas and North Carolina, all them motherfuckers, would want him. It's because he was going out to them AAU tournaments. Not only was he leading our team, he was Mr. Everything for our team. Once his brother and all that class left, okay? Once they left, that team that we we, we had, uh, those battles with Callaway and Malik Newman, well, uh, we beat them the first time we became the number one team in the state. Then they came back and beat us at our career. We let one, you know, we had a brain fart. We, let, we got down early, stormed back, and couldn't pull it off, okay? And they won. So we finished the year number two. They finished the year number one, okay? But that class left after winning three straight championships. Then we were left with Nick and his, his guys, okay? And he was Mr. Everything for us. Our best score, our best pass, our best rebounder, best defender, everything, okay? But recruiters don't give a fuck about what you're doing in the regular season for your high school team. They give a fuck about what you're doing on the AU circuit. And he was going on the AU circuit and busting motherfuckers' asses. That's why they want him. Mid-range jumper, deadly. Step back, deadly. Transition game, awesome. Then got up there and been howling, didn't know what the fuck to do with him. Got him up there just making post post entry passes uh to cats and shit. Come on, man. He ain't want him to shoot the step back jumper. Didn't really want him to shoot it at all. I'm telling you what I watch now, and I ain't one of them one that just finna got down cape for one of my guys and shit like that. But when you that highly touted and highly recruited, you brought me up here for a reason. You brought me up here to, to get busy, right? He didn't do that. Now, if they were winning, that'd be another story. If they went, oh, first, well, well, they went to the Sweet 16 like that. First, they, they won the NCAA championship like that. First, oh, they made it to the Final Four like that. First, I wouldn't have nothing to say. My boy, FAU, fat. I would love for him to get more plays run for him and, and, and uh, have the opportunity to shoot more and all that kind of stuff. But them boys didn't went to the goddamn Final Four. Obviously, what they do is working. And so I'm proud of him for humbling himself and being coached and doing what the fuck. That, that's a good coach. He know what he's doing. Okay? So it ain't about just, oh, that's my guy. I want him to be used a certain way. 
He used the man the wrong way, and the results showed that. You feel me? The results showed that. Because you got to know how to utilize your player, but also you got to know how to coach your players mentally. And this man, Ben Howland, and I'm not saying all white coaches don't know how to connect to the black, black athletes. This coach, Ben Howland, did not know how to connect to my young boy. <laughs> okay. See, what we, what we were able to do with him in high school, me and my partner Anthony Carlisle, we were able to give that young man what he needed mentally. Okay. Sometimes he needed a good ass kicking. Sometimes he just needed motherfuckers to love on him, you know, to mind encourage him. Okay. Sometimes you needed to inflate that balloon, you know, to him. Because sometimes he might be thinking low of himself, looking at what his big brother was doing and always in his big brother's shadow, Quindere and stuff like that. So sometimes you had to inflate that ego and remind him, man, you a bad motherfucker, dog. Then sometimes he'll get the big head and you had to deflate that balloon sometimes. And we were masterful at doing that. Okay, that, that that shit wasn't happening enough up there. They went through some real shit, too. They went through that 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 young man experienced tragedy. Okay, where well, where we're from in Ken, a lot of shit was going on at that time, and that young man lost some uh, uh somebody he loved, and he needed guidance with that on a day to day basis, and we weren't around him on a day to day basis anymore to give him that. He needed that. You see what I'm saying? And see, that's the kind of shit that I know you can get at an HBCU. I know that firsthand from just taking the three classes I had to take. Okay? I felt more from a spiritual standpoint and a uh, from my soul. I got a great ed book education at Southern Miss, okay? But I only had one professor who really tried to touch me from a spiritual and soulful standpoint and humanity standpoint, a moral standpoint, and that was Dr. Curtis Austin, okay? Well, shit, at Jack State, this is them three classes. All three professors were goddamn giving me that guy. All three of them black men, goddamn it, were lifting me up, okay? So I, I can only imagine... You know, what would have happened if, let's say, Jackson State raised the fund. This is pre-NIL. But let's say, that motherfucker was doing another table. Hell, so if we could have raised some funds under the table back then to get my youngin' into Jackson State. And, and uh, him being a five-star comp in that bitch, he jumped out of the gym. He, his dunks would have been crazy. His crossover would have been crazy. His step back would have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? He would have had folks electrified up in the AAC. You know what I'm saying? And then he could have got uh, nurtured. Could have got nurtured by not only the coach, but when he go to class, he would have been nurtured and all that kind of shit, you know. But that's over and done. But I think about that next kid like him, that may need that community to rally around them, okay? Because it's, it's some other shit happening up there at State as well. They, they put him in the news for some shit and they had him suspended. You know what I'm talking about? For some shit that, that go on everywhere. For a scandal that go on everywhere. Academic shit where they be having folks uh, do stuff for these for these players. We know that shit go on everywhere. But then they try to goddamn throw my kid under the bus for it. You feel me? You know, that kind of shit. But again, what's done is done with my young. Okay? And I wish that God blesses him. In his career, because he still can hoop. But I'm thinking about that next one. Okay? So, yeah, we missed out on uh, Mr. Payman. Okay? He heading on up there. And I hope he does well. I hope the young man does well. I hope he makes it to the fucking league. Okay? But I am committed to Operation Five Star. I truly believe we can get one. Okay? whether it be on the men's team or the women's team. I truly believe that if we commit ourselves to getting one of these ones, and, and let, look, the question was posed about men's team, but it can be the women's team. We see women's basketball 
is in the golden age. You see Caitlin Clark and them selling out wherever. Angel Reese and them selling out. South Carolina and them selling out. Juju out there killing. Juju Watkins, USC, check her out. Okay? And see what she's doing. All the comparison between her and Cheryl Miller. She got shit jumping out there. Like, women's basketball is jumping right now. So, when I say Operation Five Star, it doesn't have to just be a, 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 a man. But we gonna have to, if we want one to get this ball rolling, we're gonna have to commit to getting one. Okay. And then support the coaching staff as they try to get them. We gotta pay them. We gotta go after them on social media. We gotta show up to these motherfucking games. Okay. But we can't do none of that without believing that we can get it done. So if we want it, let's get to it. All right, put it on some. Please subscribe to my daddy's YouTube channel because the more subscribers he gets, the more attractive he looks to sponsors. The more attractive he looks to sponsors, the more money he can make. And the more money he can make, the more money he can spend on me.